So I'm gonna go over how to get good quality screenshots and video clips from LS Prepost for your output uh, LS Dyna D3 plot files. And this is really simple to do, and this is an easy way to get good quality uh, videos and screenshots without actually rendering anything. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to where you download LS Prepost and download a version from 4.5 or 4.6. This is just going to give you a little higher quality colors and shadows and uh, some smoothing options than 4.3. I use 4.3 for a lot of my pre-processing type stuff. So a lot of like the model design, I'll still use it because there's some functions in there that I like a lot better than in here. But I use these for kind of like my post-processing in my video and image output stuff. So download that. And that's what this is, 4.6.1, if you want the exact one that this is. And then uh, once you open it up, so this is a simulation that I have in one of my previous videos. This is full speed, so let me slow it down. It's just a hollow tube compression, and the bottom's constrained, and then the top collapses down. And then this last frame, there's actually this weird um, kind of anomaly that happens after it ends. Um, and I'll get into that. But the first thing you're going to want to do, or the first thing you may notice if you're really astute, I guess, um, these edges are kind of black outlined, if you can see up there. So if you don't want edges to be outlined or feature angles to be outlined as blacks, so if you have like a more complex geometry and you don't want that, go up here to settings, configuration settings, and then go into display, hit general, make sure your widths are all one, and then go to outlining and turn this off. So then it's going to disappear. So if you go back, see it shows it. And then it off. So that's just going to clean up if you have any uh, sharp meshes, and especially if you have like transparent parts where sh any sharp edges are going to actually show up as like black lines in the middle of a transparent part. It just looks kind of ugly. So turn that off, and you're going to get a lot smoother looking videos. If you hit OK, it's going to show you back out here. And um, the next thing I want to show you is you can go into appearance or first we can go into part color. This is how you color the parts. What you can do is you can like click on the different colors. Um, if you go to color, you can click on the different things and then you can click and it'll change the color. It's super easy to do. You can also go transparency and you can click it and make it more transparent or less transparent. Um, and so we're just going to stick with this and then you can hit done. And then you can go over here to Appearance. If you click Appearance, you can, if you have any 2D parts, so uh, 2D mesh like this, you can hit Thick and then All Visible, and it's going to actually show the thickness of that part, whatever it's defined as in the model. So it's just a good way to kind of represent um, or visually show wh whatever you're presenting, how thick it actually is mathematically. We're going to leave that. And then the last thing you can really do is light. You can actually change how the, how the light is in the, uh, the setup. So it's gonna let you change the light and the material of the object. So light, latitude is just gonna rotate the light around. And one thing you'll notice, there's a lot of shadows. So this side's much darker because the light is facing it. And this is one of the aspects that the later versions of Prepost do a lot better than the newer versions. So if you go back here, I have it open in 4.3 as well. You see how the shadow is just a lot more, um, it just kind of looks flat. It's not as dark. There's not as much contrast. It doesn't look as realistic. Um, this is one of the reasons why I don't use this for videos. But if we go back, so you can change the light however you want, go up, down, however you like. You can also do some other options. Ambient light's just going to brighten the whole thing up. Um, and then spectacular is going to brighten the light. And you can mess around with these. And then on the material, it's actually going to change the material of um, the object. You can change like the shininess to be like more shiny or less shiny, whatever you want. Um, but once you have something that you like, you need to just hit OK. We're done. And then that's really it for the lighting and anything else in the setup. Now, I've clicked these off, but whenever you open this, there's going to be a uh, timestamp and you're going to have a title up here. I'm actually not sure why the title is not showing up. There's the title. So it's going to look like this. If you open up a simulation, you're going to have like a title, a timestamp, and then your axes. 
And you can keep these on if you want to. You don't have to. But if you click through, it's going to show your time up here. So some people may want that. Uh, but if you don't want any of this on here, you can actually go into Option and go to Title, click it off, and you can just individually click these off. You can also do it by text. So you can say in this little text box, you can type um, Triad or Show Triad Off, and it'll take it off. You can do the same thing, um, I believe, Show Time, or you, maybe this one's just Time Stamp Off. It's going to get rid of it. Either way, I just know what they are, so I usually just type them in. But you can do that, and now it's just going to uh, output just this window. This won't output. Um, this won't output just what's in the window. So um, if you wanted a screenshot, so if we collapse this down to where you get like a de good deflection, so like that. If you wanted to screenshot this, traditionally, you could go down here to Snipping Tool, and you could hit New, and you could just, you know, you could just snip it. The issue with this, it's going to be restricted by the on-screen resolution of Prepost. So you're going to get all like the jagged edges and the lines. You're also going to get this, you know, uh, these little post-processing controls. So it's going to give you what's on the screen. It's good for quick stuff if you want, but if you actually want good pictures, I would suggest going into File, Print, and then click to File here. It's going to, be by default, be on to printer, but you're going to print the screen to a file. So you're just going to save out an image, basically. And then um, we'll just call this uh, RGB, RGB. And then, let's see, test. And then you, it's going to, by default, be on RGB. And then you can change whatever format you want the picture to be. And we could just do PNG and then current window, and then if you hit print, and I open it up, you're gonna get something that looks like this. Um, so it's just gonna be a little cleaner than if you just screenshot it. Um, so here's the difference between the two. They look very similar, um, but that's the RGB way. The other way is if you go back into your print, and then you change this to HD. So this is really gonna allow you to um, change the resolution of the image that you're going to output. We'll start with 300 DPI. You can also make it 1200. And if you just say, let me just rename this to HD 300 DPI print. You'll get something that like looks like this. So it just looks a little smoother, a little more, you know, HD. Um, that's a way to get screenshots. Uh, something before we go on, if you really, uh, oh, and by the way, you can turn your mesh on and off here. So if you don't want the mesh on, you can just do that. But if you really want a smooth looking animation, there's something you can do. It's hit or miss sometimes, especially if you have like thickness on. But you can go into view and then scroll down here to smooth shade. If you click that, Prepost is going to internally kind of smooth out the geometry, the edges of the elements. And you're going to get something that kind of looks like this. So it looks good, and it's really good for pictures. Um, it's going to do some wonky internal interpolation nonsense during like deformations. So in this, you know, you may not get reflections like you would if you rendered this in like a different program. But it's really good for like standstill, not animations, but you know, like actual models. You can get really smooth looking things. So you go from that, you know, normally it looks like that, and then it looks like this. So it looks really good for, you know, standard stuff, but it is going to smooth all the edges. So if you have like an impactor, it's going to smooth the edges. It could look kind of funky. But that's something that you can do. And then if you. You know, you can get really good looking uh, pictures that way. We'll leave that off for now. If you want an animation, though, so you want to export a video of this, um, this is going to come into play. So your speed of your playback will affect how fast your video records. So I'm just going to move this all the way up. And then I usually record it here. And then you can slow it down after if you want. But so what I'm going to do is go to File, Movie, and then leave it on AVI. And then you can just leave it on 
1920 by 1080. It may, this may not be default, but this is what I do. And this is FPS, so frames per second. Leave that 30, and then you can just call it whatever you want. I'll just stick with this. And then you can start. And it's going to record the movie. It's going to look like this. So um, this isn't quite as high quality as the screenshots. Um, but, and you can also notice that right here at the end, it records that last weird frame. So something that I do normally, if there's anything weird that happens like this, it's after the simulation. It's kind of bizarre that happens sometimes when you run simulations. I either cut this out after I record the video. That's an option. Or you can actually cut this out during the animation in pre-post. So if you come back here to pre-post, and um, so if you remember, if you play through, and I'll slow it down so it's not so crazy, that thing pops up right here, and it's literally that one last frame. So if you look here, there's states. So these are different states of the simulation. Um, up to state 26, it's fine. What you can do is actually tell pre-post you want the last state to be 26 and then hit enter. And then the last state is going to be state 26. So then if you re-record the video, go to movie, and then change back. Movie 2, 5. So it's not happening anymore. So that's an option to do. And again, this movie export really isn't HD. It's just a way to export the movie without having to screen record your screen. You can get better um, resolutions in other ways, like actually rendering it out. I'll have a video on that, but this is a pretty quick way to do it. Um, it's, it's really nice uh, to do, especially in combination with the smooth shade, and I can just show a video of that too. If I, uh, I can just call this smooth. So it'll, it, you know, it, it's, it, it, it looks okay. Um, but yeah, so that's how you can get rid of that last clip of the weird animation that happens at the end. But that's how you record a video. You can even change, you know, the size of this. You can change the format. Um, you can do GIFs or GIFs. I don't know how to say it. But uh, that's really how you record videos, how you get screenshots really quick and easy. Um, if you need something for like a conference or presentation or whatever, this is a pretty easy way to do it. It's not quite rendering quality, but it's good. It's, it's good quality for what you need. Uh, but if you have any questions, just leave a comment and, uh, I'll see you in the next video.